These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together, they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, do you have the brains to join them? Hello and welcome to Make Me an Egghead. We've launched a nationwide search to find the greatest quiz brains in Britain. By the end of the series, two people will emerge as champions and win the ultimate prize for quizzing enthusiasts, a place with the most fearsome quizzers in history. Yes, the eggheads! Look how fearsome they are. <laughs> so let's meet today's contestants, both hoping they've got what it takes to become an egghead. Hi, my name's Craig Element. I'm a software developer from Coventry. Hello, I'm Saeed Khan, and I'm a bullion dealer from Birmingham. Well, that is quite some combination, and that your name is actually Element. It is. I know nothing about chemistry, so hopefully there's no science questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, Craig, tell me about your quizzing pedigree. TV-wise, I was a grand finalist on 15 to 1 last year, and also a semi-finalist on Only Connect. Um, I've been on a few series over the years, um, Perfect Strangers, uh, back in the day, 2007, and um, a show called Battle of the Brains. Yeah, well, we have a lot of quiz programmes mentioned by, by the challengers here, Eggs. Which are the ones that make you think, aha, now that really is difficult? Only Connect. Only, really? The University but Challenge. That's the probably it's the not best. It's so much a quiz, though, Only Connect. It's, it's a sort of cryptic crossword, really. It's it? quite yeah. a heavy marker of, uh, of basic intelligence, though. You have to be very, very good at problem solving and lateral thinking and everything else. It, it, it does prompt at a certain level of intelligence. OK, so, Saeed, tell me about your quizzing. Well, this is my second crack at uh, trying to become a Meghead. Uh, I tried a few years ago on Are You an Egghead? Um, I've done Mastermind about uh, 12 years ago, and uh, I didn't do too well on that, but uh, I chose my uh, subject, Delida, which, if, if I was doing it again, I'd know a lot more about her now. Delida, the French singer? The French singer, yes. I think I'm her biggest fan in the UK. Oh, really? OK. Good luck to you both. Contestants, this is where you need to prove that you could be an egghead. Just like on eggheads, both of you will compete over a series of different rounds where your knowledge will be tested on the regular eggheads categories. So the first head-to-head -head battle will be on the subject of history. I will ask each of you three multiple-choice questions on history in turn. Whoever answers the most questions correctly wins the round. So far, so simple. But the prize for winning a round on Make Me an Egghead is that you gain an extra brain for the final. Not just any old brain, one of these very young and brisk brains over here. Before the show, we tossed a coin. As a result of that, Saeed, you have the option as to whether you would like to play first or second. I'd like to play first, please, Jeremy. So here we go. The contest is underway. Good luck, guys. Saeed, popular from the 15th to the 17th century, what sort of man's clothing was a doublet? Trousers, hat or jacket? I think it was worn along with hose, which are socks, so I'd imagine it'd be the trousers. Interesting. Egg heads? Oh, the jacket, jacket, jacket. jacket. Yeah, yeah. Doublet and hose. Where do we get doublet and hose from, then? Well, it must be jacket and trousers. I jacket and trousers. <laughs> Brilliant, Judith. <laughs> <laughs> jacket is the answer. Oh. Craig, during the Civil War, Charles I moved his court from London to which city? Oxford, York or Norwich? I'm trying to think of where he moved his banner and sort of Derby in the Midlands somewhere as a kind of like a flashpoint uh, out of those three cities. I will go for Oxford, please. Oxford is correct. Back to you, side. Which type of aircraft launched a torpedo that critically damaged the steering of the German battleship Bismarck? Is it Bristol Beaufort, Fairy Swordfish or de Havilland Mosquito? I'm going to go for de Havilland Mosquito, because it's the one I've heard of. Now, Chris will know this. No, it's fairy swordfish. Oh. Absolutely obsolescent-looking old biplane crate that could just about stagger into the air. It was a very effective torpedo bomber. And the torpedo in question actually jammed her rudder so she could only steam in circles, and she's done for, basically. So, so it dropped a torpedo into the sea? Yeah. It used to come in low, let the torpedo go, then get out of there, PDQ, and the torpedo would uh, carry on. Fairy there we swordfish. go. Thank you, Chris. Fascinating. <laughs> Fairy swordfish is the answer, Saeed. So, yet to score. And back to you, Craig. Which British noble married the Infanta of Castile and attempted to take the Castilian throne by force in 1386? Warwick the Kingmaker, John of Gaunt, or Harry Hotspur? 1386, so it's late 14th century. Um, 
I think Warwick the Kingmaker was more 15th century, possibly Harry Hotspur as well. I mean, it's all Hundred Years' War. I think I'll go for John of Gaunt, please. John of Gaunt is the right answer, so you've got two points, Said, you can't catch him up. So that means, Craig, you've won the first head-to-head. -head. And you can scan these five eggheads now and decide whose brain you want to join you in the final. I'd like a combination of, of all of them, really, because they <laughs> could all add something to my bow. Um, if I could select Pat's, please. Pat, how's it feel back there? I hope I can help uh, Craig. Yeah, I can give him an answer. I'm sensing that Craig's very good on his history. Well, he, he did well there, didn't he? Well, the stakes are high here. As it stands, Craig has one egghead to help him in the final. Saeed has no one so far, but it's early days. Next category is film and TV. And, Craig, you can choose whether you go first or second, because you won the last round. Uh, may I go first, please? And here is your first question. Which Doctor Who actor played Tristan Farnan in the TV drama series All Creatures Great and Small? Is it Peter Davison, Tom Baker, or Christopher Eccleston? Uh, I mean, they're all, they're all doctors. Um, I think Tom Baker was the, was the fourth, then Peter Davison the fifth, Christopher Eccleston obviously in the reboot in 2005. Um, All Creatures Great and Small is the 80s TV series. I think Peter Davison was in all creatures great and small at the same, similar time as he was a doctor. So I'll go for Peter Davison, please. Peter Davison is right. Well done. Yeah, he was, was he the younger one of the two? Yeah. And who played the older one? Robert Hardy. Robert Hardy. Before your time, Lisa, I guess. I'm afraid so, although I was drinking the other day with a guy who played a vegetarian vet in two episodes. So <laughs> it lives on. It's taught me everything I know about country life. OK, Saeed, back to you. What is the first name of Mrs. Brown, the character played by Brendan O'Carroll in the comedy Mrs. Brown's Boys? Is it Aileen, Agnes, or Aurora? I must admit it's not a comedy I've watched, but I think her name is Agnes. Agnes is correct. Well done. You've got some points on the board there. OK, back to you, Craig. Who played the third sailor alongside Frank Sinatra and Gene Kelly in the 1949 film On the Town? Stubby K, Jules Munchin, or Donald O'Connor? Musicals aren't really my, my bag. Um, Donald O'Connor, the name rings a bell from being in a musical, but should I go for Donald O'Connor because I know he was a musical actor, um, or shall I veer away? I don't really know either of the first two names, um, but I will go for Stubby K, please. Hey, kids. Oh, I would have gone for Donald O'Connor. All right. Stubby K was in Guys and Dolls. I'm looking for a bit of certainty here. Who's, it's who's Jules Munchin. OK, I Chris knows. Oh. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> You're playing the blinder here. You've got the torpedoes and oh, the yeah. musicals. You've got everything covered. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jules Munchin, it is. Chris is obviously the go-to guide today. OK, back to your side. Which Carry On regular married the actor John Le Mesurier in 1949? Joan Sims. Patsy Rollins or Hattie Jakes? Well, it's the lovely matron Hattie Jakes. Hattie Jakes is the right answer. Well done. So, so it's two to Side and one to Craig. And Craig, if you get this wrong, it's Side's round. What is the surname of Sheldon in the US sitcom The Big <laughs> Bang Theory? Hosenstein, Becker or Cooper? Uh, I think they're all surnames of characters in The Big Bang Theory. I'm not an average watcher, but I think Sheldon Cooper's played by Jim Parsons. I'll go for Sheldon Cooper, please. Yeah, that's right, Sheldon Cooper it is. So you're still in it. But, Saeed, you have the chance now to take the round. What is the name of the Hoover-like companion in Teletubbies? Binky, Tallulah, or Nunu? The children were big fans of this show. It's Nunu. <laughs> you know, it's we like, found our level, haven't we? Was it, we have found our level. It was in Dave came unstuck on a telling this question a while back. Brilliant. I was talking to my daughter on Skype and asked her the same question. She came out with it straight away. Yeah, that's right. We realised that Harry Potter and Telly Tubbies are very important in this in this game. Okay, Nunu is right to put you out of your misery there. So, side, well done. You've you've pulled it back Thank you. majestically there, and you've won the second head to head. We have got a contest here, haven't we? So you now, Saeed, can choose an egghead for the final round. Obviously, can't be Pat. I'd like to choose Lisa, please. 
Lisa, what are we hoping will come up in the final? Can you Basically, give Saeed any advice? We're looking at food, fashion and celebrity kids tend to be my areas of expertise that none of the other eggheads can touch. And history and literature. Well, you know, that they tend to be areas that these guys can touch as well. As it stands, Craig has one egghead to help him in the final. Saeed also has one great contest. And the third and final head-to-head -head is on arts and books. So, Saeed, you won the last, so you can choose whether you go first or second. I'll go first, please. Here we go, your first question. What informal term is often given to the dramatic idea that an object which appears on stage must be used later in the play? Is it Chekhov's gun, Beckett's door, or Pinter's chair? Um, drama, I would suggest maybe it's to create some sort of drama, Chekhov's gun. Let's see whether we know. This is really interesting. Yes, yes that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Is there a Chekhov play where a gun was on the table? Ooh, good I question. Think well, I think the point is, if you show the gun yeah. early in the play, it must effectively be used. Good answer. Chekhov's gun is right. And you can, at some point, Saeed, produce gold bullion if you want to. If you want to just swing it your way, this might be the moment. OK, Craig, over to you, our software developer. The novels with the English titles Kafka on the Shore and Hear the Wind Sing were originally written in which language? Afrikaans, Urdu, or Japanese? Um, just guess, guessing a language, really. Um, I don't... I don't recognise the, uh, the piece of work, so I couldn't tell you who they're by. Kafka on the shore and Hear the Winds. Hear the Wind Sing. Is that H-E-A-R? H-E-A-R. Hear the Wind yeah. Sing. Um, I will go for Jap Japanese, but with no certainty at all. OK, well, you've got it right. And the author is? Is it Murasake? Mur Murakami. Is it Haruki Murakami? Haruki Murakami, is yeah. that right? <laughs> yeah, I feel like he's done something else that was more famous than those two, but I can't remember what it was. Um, the Wind Up Bird Chronicle and yeah. Norwegian Wood. Japanese is the right answer. Well done. OK, back to you, Said. Which sculptor lived at Truin Studio in St Ives from 1949 until she died in 1975? Was it Louise Bourgeois, Georgia O'Keeffe or Barbara Hepworth? Well, the one I was thinking of has come up and I think it's Barbara Hepworth. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I've been round her garden. Barbara Hepworth. OK, Craig, to catch up in our third head-to-head. -head. What is the title of Kate Atkinson's 1997 novel of which Isabel Fairfax is the central character? Is this human croquet, human polo, or human rugby? I don't think human rugby sounds like a particular good choice of title for a novel. Just wondering if, uh, would it be human croquet? Um, human polo. I will go for human croquet, please. Saeed, what do you think? I would have gone for human polo. It's actually human croquet. Oh. So you're, you're level, you've got two points each. And your third question, Saeed. The poet Dante Alighieri is buried in a tomb in which Italian city? Modena, Ravenna or Padua? Well, I think Modena and Padua are more famous in England for being in Shakespeare plays, so I'm going to go down the middle. So, Ravenna. Let's see whether the, the answer is right. Egghead, died you know? in Ravenna. Judith says you're right, and you are actually right. Mm. Ravenna it is. You've got three out of three. Pressure on Craig now. You have to get this right, Craig. Many of the greatest works of which of these painters were destroyed in a fire at the Doge's Palace in Venice in 1577? Giovanni Bellini, Artemisia Gentileschi, or Guido Reni? I can't pick uh, the 1577. I can't pick any of the, the painters' lives from that year. Um, I will go for Giovanni Bellini, please. Giovanni Bellini is the correct answer. Well, you're playing well, both of you. Three points each. Our third head-to-head. -head. It's level after three questions, so we go to sudden death now. I don't give you alternatives. It gets a bit harder. Said, thus conscience does make cowards of us all is a line from which Shakespeare play. I've heard this one, but I'm just trying to think. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. The one that springs to mind is Hamlet. Hamlet is right. 
Sudden death. You need this to stay in, Craig. What is the surname of the 19th century British painter who lived out his final years in Chelsea under the assumed name Mr. Booth? The surname of the widow who was his companion. 19th century English painter. It's 19th century. I'm going to go sort of pre Raphaelite Brotherhood. Um, Just the surname. I'm going to go for Millet. Millet. Now, I wonder if the AKs know this. Turner. I have a feeling it was Turner. Yeah, Turner. Turner no, it was known as Mr. Booth, not Mr. Turner. And that means that you've taken the round, Said. So well done. You've won the final head to head. As a result, you have an advantage here, Said. You can choose another egghead for the final round. Can't be Pat, can't be Lisa. I'd love to choose Barry, please. OK, he's champing at the bit there. <laughs> I know that unless you get in the booth there to help Barry, it feels like you haven't done a day's work, does it? <laughs> I, I, I'm always very eager to help the contestants because I know what stress they're going through. So we wish you both well. Craig, you've got Pat in the final round. Said, you've got both Lisa and Barry. Why don't we now play the final round? So this is what we have been playing towards. It is time to find out who is one step closer to becoming an egghead and who will be eliminated from our search. Craig and Saeed, I will ask each of you three questions in turn, and this time the questions are all general knowledge. In this final round, you will have the backing of the eggheads you've won over the course of the show. So, Craig, you've got Pat there, and Saeed, you have got Lisa and Barry. You'll be able to call on your respective eggheads for advice before giving an answer to a question, but you can ask each of them for help only once, so you need to use them wisely. You happy with that? Yes. Thank you. Good stuff. Now, Saeed, you won the last round, so you now get to choose whether you want to go first or second. I'll go first, please, Jeremy. And here we go with your first question. Who succeeded Malcolm Fraser as Prime Minister of Australia in 1983? Is it Bob Hawke, Gough Whitlam, or Robert Menzies? Um, I've got an idea, but I'm going to ask for Barry's help, please. So you're calling an egghead straight in. Barry? Right, I'm going to have to think about this. I, they're all Australian prime ministers there. Robert Menzies was, was the earliest of the three, and I, so I'm discounting him straight away. So I have to think between Bob Hawke and Gough Whitlam. 1983. I am really not sure on this one. I, I'm leaning towards Gough Whitlam because I believe one of the Australian prime ministers was... Uh, was removed by the High Commissioner in the 80s, and I believe that was Gough Whitlam. So on that basis, I'm going to go for Gough Whitlam, but I'm really not too certain on this. OK, so Barry's given you some measured advice there for Gough Whitlam. You don't have to accept it, side. It's, it's up to you. Well, I was torn between two, but I think that's tipped the balance in favour of Gough Whitlam, please. OK, your answer is Gough Whitlam. I wonder if Lisa knows. Lisa? It, this is worrying me because I probably would have gone for Gough Whitlam as well and, as we know, my inklings on Australia tend to be completely wrong. The only thing I remember is that Mrs Thatcher was a big buddy of Bob Hawke, so he was 80s. The answer is Bob Hawke. Oh, I thought he was later. Here's the thing. The, the Gough Whitlam crisis, when he was removed by the, the British representative, was actually the like 70s. So there's a long, long time before this. So Bob Hawke is the answer. OK, Craig, your question. In the tax year 2016 to 2017, how much is the personal allowance for income tax in the UK? Is it £9,500, £10,250 or £11,000? Um, I know that it's increased recently. Um, I thought it had gone to about nine and a half. Um, sorry, ten and a half. I thought it had gone up from nine and a half to about ten and a half. Um, so... Do I use Pat for confirmation, or do I go with my instincts, even though it's not the same figure there, it's in the ballpark? Um, why has it gone up to 11 from 10? I'm going to go for £10,250, please. Right, so you're not calling in your egghead, you're answering it. I've just realised that you and Pat are both software developers, so you've got potential synergy there. The answer is 11000 so no one has scored a point yet. Back to you, Said. Which of these is closest to the meaning of the word attenuate? Is it make up, make thinner, 
or make bigger? Well, I think um, it's something to do with making something bigger, so I'll go for that one, please. Make bigger. I love language, and I, I wouldn't have got this. The answer is make thinner. As in, I, sometimes they say a musical note is attenuated. So no one has scored a point yet in this final round. Back to you, Craig. Who would be most likely to execute a Barani flip in their daily work? Barani is capital B A R A N I. Is it a chef, commodities trader, or gymnast? A Barani flip. Barani flip. Mm, I'm guessing it's named after uh, the person who uh, devised it. Um, it's too obvious to be a gymnast, possibly a, sh a chef. Um, Again, I'm tempted with commodities trader, but with the situation of the game, do I gamble on oh, my last hunch? Didn't quite work out. Um, do I gamble on commodities trader? Would you flip? Would you buy something and sell something quickly? Would that be a flip? Um, do I ask Pat? Do I save Pat? Oh, um, I'm going to leave Pat for the third question again. <laughs> and uh, guess that it's something to do with like buying and selling very quickly and go for commodities trader. OK, I buy your logic completely. I've taken your answer. Let's just see with Pat. What would you have said, Pat? I think it's a gymnastic move. I think Barani was a gymnast. Oh! <laughs> I sort of thought that Pat would know that. He knows most things, but Barani flip is indeed a gymnastics move. <laughs> so gymnast is the answer. <laughs> what an unusual <laughs> final round we've got here. Said. Which African country's coat of arms features a baobab tree and a lion? Cameroon, Ethiopia, or Senegal? And baobab is B-A-O-B-A-B. -A -A -B. Yes, I've actually seen a baobab tree, um, so I kind of w would associate it with Africa or Asia, but uh, that doesn't really narrow it down. I don't think it's Cameroon. Um, then it could be. Uh, I'm going to... Ask Lisa for your help, please. OK, Lisa. I can't come up with a reason for this, but something is telling me it's Ethiopia. And I am struggling to work out what is telling me that. Um, but there is, there is a, a relatively strong link to it in my head. All right. Uh, that's about the best I can do for you, Said. I'm sorry. All right, Thank so you, she's, she's guiding you there. Well, I was thinking of a lion of Ethiopia maybe to do with Haile Selassie or something like that, so I'll go for Ethiopia. OK. Barry, do you know? I'm thinking you, if you do know, you've had a complete poker face there. Uh, I think it isn't Ethiopia. I would be tempted to go for Cameroon. It's not Cameroon, it's not Ethiopia, it's Senegal. We've got five red crosses. But you've got a rather nice position here, Craig, in a way, cos you've got your egghead still. I might not ask him, I might just free Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Why don't you just guess this one as well? <laughs> And if you get this right, you've won. Bytown is the former name of which Canadian city? That's B-Y-T-O-W-N. Is it Ottawa, Montreal or Quebec? Um, I actually read this the other day. Um, I, think, I think it's Ottawa, but just for the hell of it, I'll see if Mr Gibson thinks it's Ottawa as well. Oh, well, you planted the thought now. <laughs> you should have not said. OK, extract from your mind what, what Craig has said, Pat, and tell us what you think. Craig is dead to me. I have forgotten everything he said. <laughs> um, I always have to check. I think Toronto was Yorktown, and I think Ottawa was Bytown. Uh, I don't think it applies to Montreal or Quebec, so I think it's Ottawa as well. Can I have Ottawa, please? You've given Ottawa. If you've got this right, you are the winner. <laughs> the right answer is Ottawa. So you've pulled ahead there. Congratulations, Craig, you have won! <laughs> well, I, I could only... What could I say, Side? You had the two eggheads there. Mm. Don't want to blame you guys <laughs> leading Side astray. Goff Whitlam. I thought Goff Whitlam was meat and drink to you, Barry, as a quizzer. Yes, I really should have known that. I mean, I'm so sorry for, for, for leading you astray. Thanks for playing, Said. Thank you. Well, what a great contest, though, both of you, really. That was, there was some great quizzing in there. You proved, Craig, that winning comes as naturally to you as it does to our eggheads. You are one step closer to joining our quiz goliaths, but your work for today is not quite done.
We give you three points for each round you've won today. So you've got three points on the board already. And you're now going to get the chance to add to those points by answering quick fire questions for two minutes. We will give you one point for each correct answer. And we then see where your final score puts you on our Eggheads leaderboard. The top four places at the end of the heats will make it through to the semi finals. So we'll have a quick look at the leaderboard as it currently stands. We've got three names on there, as you can see. So you will, at the end of today, be not just on the leaderboard, but in the top four. And we'll see how far up there you can get. All to play for. Are you ready? I am indeed. Good luck. Your time starts now. Until 2005, Alicia Dixon was a member of which girl band? Mystique. Correct. In the 1960s TV series The Avengers, Patrick McNee played John who? Steed. Correct. According to the saying, what is thicker than water? Blood. Correct. In 2004, which football club did Wayne Rooney leave Everton. to join Manchester United? Everton, correct. Established in 1926, Route 66 ran eastwards from Los Angeles, terminating in which city? Uh, 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 Chicago. Correct. What is the traditional name of the pantomime that features the character Widow Twanky? Aladdin. Correct. Which hero from Greek mythology saved the Argonauts from the sirens by playing beautiful music? Uh, Hera. No, Orpheus. The Vatican City is an enclave within which city? Rome. Correct. Which term for a successful womanizer comes from a character in Nicholas Rowe's 18th century play, The Fair Penitent? Uh, pass. Lothario. What was the first feature film to be directed by Quentin Tarantino to be given a full theatrical release? That's War Dogs. Correct. The composer Tchaikovsky, famous for his Nutcracker Suite, was born in which century? 19th. Correct. In the periodic table, which element has the chemical symbol AU? Gold. Correct. Dan Brown's best-selling novel, The Da Vinci Code, begins with a murder in which famous museum? Louvre. Correct. Which musical features the song Feed the Birds? May Poppins. Correct. In which country are the Gabba and the Wacker? Australia. Historic cricket grounds, correct. In which US state is Yale University based? New York. No, Connecticut. In which decade of the 20th century did Clement Attlee become the UK Prime Minister? 1940s. Correct. What nationality is the fictional detective Hercule Poirot? Belgian. Correct. In both 1980 and 1984, in which athletics event did Sebastian Coe win Olympic gold medals? 1,500 metres. Correct. Which island, the largest in Wales, is separated from Anglesey. Wales by the Menai Strait? Correct. Anglesey. Which Oscar-winning 1962 film has no credited Long speaking Arabia. roles for women? Correct. Which Scottish monarch was killed at the Battle of... I can't finish that question, but my goodness, you were storming along there. You've scored 18 points. That's very good. We add in the three points you got from your round, giving you a grand total of 21 points. Ooh. Let us see where that puts you now. You're ahead of Rupi and Gareth in second place. Craig, just behind Ian Bailey, who's got 27. Craig, well done. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> that my, was... lo looking at the leaderboard, I think 20 was my, my benchmark, so I'm pleased. So whoever's in the green, when we've seen all the competitors in all the heats, the four names in the green area will be in the semi-finals. That's how it works. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Syed, as well. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. Join us next time to find out who else might have what it takes to become an egghead. Ha! <sighs> Until then, goodbye. These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together, they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, do you have the brains to join them? Hello and welcome to Make Me an Egghead. We've launched a nationwide search to find the greatest quiz brains in Britain. By the end of the series, two people will emerge as champions and win the ultimate prize for quizzing enthusiasts, a place with the most fearsome quizzers in history. Yes, the eggheads! Look how fearsome they are. <laughs> so let's meet today's contestants, both hoping they've got what it takes to become an egghead. Hi, my name's Craig Element. I'm a software developer from Coventry. Hello, I'm Saeed Khan, and I'm a bullion dealer from Birmingham. Wow, that is quite some combination. And that your name is actually Element? It is. I know nothing about chemistry, so hopefully there's no science questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, Craig, tell me about your quizzing pedigree. TV-wise, I was a grand finalist on 15 to 1 last year, and also a semi-finalist on Only Connect. Um, I've been on a few series over the years, um, Perfect Strangers, uh, back in the day, 2007, and um, a show called Battle of the Brains. Yeah, well, we have a lot of quiz 
programmes mentioned by, by the challenges here, Eggs, which are the ones that make you think, aha, now that really is difficult? Only Connect. Only, really? The university is a challenge. That's the probably it's the best It's not so too. much a quiz, though, Only Connect. It's, it's a sort of cryptic crossword, really. It's yeah. quite a heavy marker of, uh, of basic intelligence, though. You have to be very, very good at problem solving and lateral thinking and everything else. It, it, it does prompt at a certain level of intelligence. OK, so, Sai, tell me about your quizzing. Well, this is my second crack at uh, trying to become an egghead. Uh, I tried a few years ago on Are You an Egghead? Um, I've done Mastermind about uh, 12 years ago, and uh, I didn't do too well on that, but uh, I chose my uh, subject, Delida, which, if, if I was doing it again, I'd know a lot more about her now. Delida, the French singer? The French singer, yes. I think I'm her biggest fan in the UK. Oh, really? OK. Good luck to you both. Contestants, this is where you need to prove that you could be an egghead. Just like on eggheads, both of you will compete over a series of different rounds where your knowledge will be tested on the regular eggheads categories. So the first head-to-head -head battle will be on the subject of history. I will ask each of you three multiple-choice questions on history in turn. Whoever answers the most questions correctly wins the round. So far, so simple. But the prize for winning a round on Make Me an Egghead is that you gain an extra brain for the final. Not just any old brain. One of these very young and brisk brains over here. Before the show, we tossed a coin. As a result of that, Saeed, you have the option as to whether you would like to play first or second. I'd like to play first, please, Jeremy. So here we go. The contest is underway. Good luck, guys. Saeed, popular from the 15th to the 17th century, what sort of man's clothing was a doublet? Trousers, hat or jacket? I think it was worn along with hose, which are socks, so I'd imagine it'd be the trousers. Interesting. Egg heads? More of a jacket, jacket, jacket. jacket. Yeah, yeah. Doublet and hose. Where do we get doublet and hose from, then? Well, it must be jacket and trousers. I jacket and trousers. <laughs> Brilliant, Judith. <laughs> <laughs> jacket is the answer. Oh. Craig, during the Civil War, Charles I moved his court from London to which city? Oxford, York or Norwich? I'm trying to think of where he moved his banner and sort of Derby in the Midlands somewhere as a kind of like a flashpoint uh, out of those three cities. I will go for Oxford, please. Oxford is correct. Back to you, side. Which type of aircraft launched a torpedo that critically damaged the steering of the German battleship Bismarck? Is it Bristol Beaufort, Fairy Swordfish or de Havilland Mosquito? I'm going to go for de Havilland Mosquito, because it's the one I've heard of. Now, Chris will know this. No, it's a fairy swordfish. Oh. Absolutely obsolescent-looking old biplane crate that could just about stagger into the air. It was a very effective torpedo bomber. And the torpedo in question actually jammed her rudder so she could only steam in circles, and she's done for, basically. So, so it dropped a torpedo into the sea? Yeah. It used to come in low, let the torpedo go, then get out of there, PDQ, and the torpedo would uh, carry on. Fairy there we go. Fish. Thank you, Chris. Fascinating. <laughs> Fairy swordfish is the answer, Saeed. So, yet to score. And back to you, Craig. Which British noble married the Infanta of Castile and attempted to take the Castilian throne by force in 1386? Warwick the Kingmaker, John of Gaunt, or Harry Hotspur? 1386, so it's late 14th century. Um, I think Warwick the Kingmaker was more 15th century, possibly Harry Hotspur as well. I mean, it's all, it's all Hundred Years' War. I think I'll go for John of Gaunt, please. John of Gaunt is the right answer, so you've got two points, Said, you can't catch him up. So that means, Craig, you've won the first head-to-head. -head. And you can scan these five eggheads now and decide whose brain you want to join you in the final. I'd like a combination of, of all of them, really, because they could all add something to my bow. Um, if I could select Pat, please. Pat, how's it feel back there? I hope I can help uh, Craig. Yeah, Thank you very much. I can give him an answer. I'm sensing that Craig's very good on his history. Well, he did well there, didn't he? Well, the stakes are high here. As it stands, Craig has one egghead to help him in the final. Saeed has no one so far, but it's early days. Next category is film and TV. And Craig, you can choose whether you go first or second, because you won the last round. Uh, may I go first, please? And here is your first question. Which Doctor Who actor played Tristan Farnan in the TV drama series All Creatures Great and Small? Is it Peter Davison, Tom Baker, or Christopher Eccleston? Uh, I mean, they're all, they're all doctors. 
Um, I think Tom Baker was the was either fourth, then Peter Davidson the fifth, Christopher Elkson obviously in the reboot in 2005. Um, All Creeks Great and Small is the 80s TV series. I think Peter Davison was in All Creatures Great and Small at the same, similar time as he was a doctor. So I'll go for Peter Davison, please. Peter Davison is right. Well done. Yeah, he was, was he the younger one of the two? Yeah. And who played the older one? Robert Hardy. Robert Hardy. Before your time, Lisa, I guess. I'm afraid so, although I was drinking the other day with a guy who played a vegetarian vet in two episodes. So <laughs> it lives on. It's taught me everything I know about country life. OK, Saeed, back to you. What is the first name of Mrs Brown, the character played by Brendan O'Carroll in the comedy Mrs Brown's Boys? Is it Aileen, Agnes or Aurora? I must admit it's not a comedy I've watched, but I think her name is Agnes. Agnes is correct. Well done. Got some points on the board there. OK, back to you, Craig. Who played the third sailor alongside Frank Sinatra and Gene Kelly in the 1949 film On the Town? Stubby K, Jules Munchin, or Donald O'Connor? Musicals aren't really my, my bag. Um, Donald O'Connor, the name rings a bell from being in a musical, but should I go for Donald O'Connor because I know he was a musical actor, um, or shall I veer away? I don't really know either of the first two names, um, but I will go for Stubby K, please. Hey, kids. Oh, I would have gone for Donald O'Connor. All right. Stubby K was in Guys and Dolls. <laughs> I'm looking for a bit of certainty here. Who's, it's who's Jules Munchin. OK, I Chris knows. Yeah. Oh. Well done. <laughs> You're playing a blinder here. You've got the torpedoes and oh, the yeah. musicals. You've got everything covered. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jules Munchin, it is. Chris is obviously the go-to guide today. OK, back to your side. Which carry-on regular married the actor John Le Mesure in 1949? Joan Sims, Patsy Rollins or Hattie